Welcome back to the channel everyone. Thanks a lot for coming back. Part 3 of the Grain Elevator Project. I think I've changed the name every time I've had a video. Grain Silos, Grain Elevators, Grain Tower. It's Grain something. Grain related. How about that? Uh, so, in the past uh, about week or so or since I shot the or uploaded the last video, I completed the rest of the silos themselves with the painting technique that I showed. And I'm uh, pretty pleased with it, so I'll, I'll flip over and show that in a second. Got them all painted. Uh, so now the next steps, I've got the um, conveyor houses along the top that are, are finished. Those need to be painted, so I thought I would do a gray primer coat over the top of all of that. And then I'm also going to start working on the... Um, uh, the grain conveyor, uh, which is the kit that I showed that I got at Train Fest uh, last video. And I'm going to use that as the distribution uh, piping and everything like that. And I thought it would be important to uh, get that assembled and painted. And then I also want to get the uh, distribution sheds. Uh, I don't, I'm not really sure what to call them exactly. Um, but, uh, you know, where the, the cars come in and they're loaded and unloaded and stuff like that. Uh, all of the all of these items are going to be painted probably the same artificial aluminum or um, yeah, I have a color that I use um, and I, I think it was actually like a CB&Q um, artificial aluminum color and that works really well for you know kind of simulating a, a metallic surface um, so we're going to do that. Um, so really, I, I think, you know, I want to say that the modeling portion of this project is, is kind of starting to wind down. Now I say that, and every time I see a picture of a grain tower, a grain elevator, there's a, just a ton of them with a lot of piping and, you know, really kind of intricate details. And I'm not sure how far I'm going to get into that, at least not at this point. Um, this is more kind of, I want to get it in, um, kind of get the project to a point where I'm happy with it and it represents what I'm looking for it to represent and then I can come back later and and finish off you know like super detailing it if you will and that brings me to a point that I wanted to to comment on and this has been a, a large project um, you know it's it's three video parts so far and that's only a portion of of the work that I've done on my end uh, I haven't recorded everything um, I spent about three hours finishing up painting uh, the silos and um, just you know other parts of the project, kit bashing and stuff like that. And the thing that I find that's that's critical when you're working on a big project like this is you want to get it done. However, your work can start to suffer if you're getting bored with it or it's just becoming tedious and you just say, oh, I, I really don't want to do this, you know. Remember. This is a hobby, it's supposed to be fun. So what I like to do is mix it up a bit. If I get to a point in a project where I'm finding it more tedious than it is fun, I'll break away, do something else. I like to have a lot of kits around, um, and that's why I'm always scouring eBay or uh, HO Interchange for kits. And in recent weeks, I picked up um, some Accurail and some old Walther's uh, kits and uh, just freight cars and in this case they happen to be grain cars so perfect tie-in um, but I'll work on those and and they're simple kits the Accurail kits are really simple to assemble um, as are the Walther's ones um, and, and it just it kind of breaks the uh, I don't want to say monotony because it is a hobby where it, it's not monotonous you know but it breaks things up a bit and, and can re-energize you for your your big project and in the case of like a grain car uh, model that like that I'm building, it it ties in. So it, it really I'm adding to the the grain tower indirectly. So just something to think about if you find yourself kind of getting a little bit. Oh, this project's getting long in the tooth. Um, find a quick one that you can just uh, pound out, you know, and and check a box off. Okay, I got that project complete. Now I'm re-energized and I can get back to you know the main task at hand. So. Okay, so what I decided to do is, uh, based on a few pictures that I saw, uh, some of the head houses have like vertical streaks. Some of them have like a horizontal streak, I think depending on how the concrete was poured and how it started to age over time. 
uh, but a lot of the pictures I saw had more of a, a wash running down the, the sides of them, much like the silos did. And because this is, you know, I'm, I'm going to simulate it as a, a solid piece, um, there's no joint lines or, or expansion joints or anything within these. So, going with a weathered look, I decided to take the same aged concrete that I used on the silos and I just painted vertical streaks with my airbrush and uh, this is the back side so this this is the side you won't see so this is that I'm gonna start with um, but you can see I just and then these sides uh, will be covered by the silos themselves so I've only got a few streaks in this area but on the front side here I've got uh, some streaks that run the entire distance so what I'm hoping to do now is come back with uh, kind of an off white almost like a sandy white color and then I'm hoping that this will create dark spots in the paint that I won't be able to cover over as much kind of creating a, a varied uh, aging concrete look um, so that's the plan um, I'm gonna start uh, doing that and we'll see what happens okay so here's the end result um, I went with like a sand color uh, well, really it was a white color with a little bit of sand in it, and it, so it's, it's an off-white of sorts, and uh, it might not look like much at the moment, but it's definitely uh, a, a little bit, uh, you know, it's not pure white, which is what I was going for, and then it's got some streaks in it, so it looks like it's been out in the, in the elements for quite a while. Okay, so uh, I kind of skipped ahead a little bit, but I... Uh, I went ahead and I kit bashed. I wanted a, I was going to have just a single uh, loading bay, but I decided that uh, since I have all these parts, I was going to go ahead and uh, make a, a double. And so what I did was is I took each kit, each Walther's kit comes with um, one uh, single loading bay, which is essentially this portion here. It's this entire, this entire section. So what I did and and it's it's pretty you really I really had to kind of hack it together here but essentially I I took the second one and I cut the this inner leg off of this opening spliced them together and then uh, I don't know if it'll show up or not but uh, I basically had to take some extra paneling that comes with it and I don't really know what this was for I think it's for the uh, for the truck loading which I'm not going to use because that would be on the opposite side of the of the uh, head house and since I'm not modeling that portion I had these extra panels. And this is the size of the panel um, to start with so I think it was just the side um, but it's the same um, pattern as this. Now the only downside is and, and you're really not going to see it but uh, if you can see it on camera or not I didn't line the siding up perfectly so that was kind of my mistake I should have done that but I'm hoping once it's painted and, and that's going to be kind of on the side of the structure I'm hoping you're not going to be able to see that. But you can see here I spliced the walls together here and then uh, this is where the new roof piece is and then uh, this is the original roof piece for the single and then this is the other roof piece um, and what's nice is what, there's holes here um, for where the loading hoses will come in and so what what will work out really well is I'm going to have um, hoses coming down to each of these uh, from the main head house and so it'll look like we've got two loading tracks um, underneath this single structure. So um, this is pretty much ready for a, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, primer coat this with a gray spray paint uh, similar to like I did with the silos and the head house itself um, but before I do that I think uh, I'm gonna do all the painting in one shot so I'm going to go ahead and start on the uh, grain conveyor itself because uh, that will get a gray primer coat as well. And then there's also some other um, uh, details that go on top of the structure. I believe they're um, blowers of some kind, um, maybe filters, uh, dust collectors. No, I'm not 100% positive, but uh, those need to be assembled and we'll get in a, a coat of aluminum as well. So I'm going to paint them all at the same time. Okay, so I started building the, uh, the grain conveyor kit. It's pretty simplistic. There's not a whole lot to it. There's the, uh, the top chute um, in 
looks like the uh, distribution network for all the piping and everything and of course the main structure. Uh, the one thing I did find though is that it wasn't tall enough. Um, it uh, it would have only come to the top of the grain dryers that I have which I didn't feel was high enough and if you look at pictures uh, a lot of times this distribution system is taller than the tallest structure and then obviously the piping goes out accordingly. Uh, so what I did was I just used um, the uh, you know standard sheet styrene and I ended up um, adding on three inches. Now it's going to lack a little bit of the detail. Um, the model itself or the Walters kit itself has uh, these built-in ribs. Now I could probably you know cut some pieces and, and put those in but I plan to hide this behind the scenery and just have this kind of in the background um, and then once it's painted silver I'm hoping that you really won't notice that it's uh, slightly different. Uh, the one thing I did do with it was uh, to create a box out of it. Um, I just chamfered all the corners on each of these pieces. Ended up being slightly wider um, than it should have been but oh well. Like I said, it's going to be hidden behind, I think, the rest of the scenery. And then you can see here I've got um, the platform. I'm going to have to uh, extend the, I just realized that, I'm going to have to extend included with this um, is this uh, ladder. I've got some ladder stock, so I'm going to have to go ahead and uh, extend that a little bit and then figure out how to um, extend the safety cage as well. That could be a bit of a challenge now that I think about it. So I'll have to come up with a good way to to modify that. One of the things that I bought a while back were these Walther's support trusses for guy wires and piping. And uh, I, I bought two and as it turns out I really didn't need to. But because uh, you really get enough and unless you're really going crazy and building a, a really big structure. I mean well although mine is I don't have as much piping as as some that I've seen pictures of. Um, however, you get a, a big brass sheet and uh, they're photo etched and um, you just gotta clip them out. Now, the thing that kinda is strange is it, it tells you which piping it works with right here on the package. In some regards, you'd think that that piping would be something included with the grain conveyor. Yeah, it's not. It, I guess I was expecting it to be kind of universal. They're all cornerstone. They're all part of their grain structures. So what I found uh, that I had to do is I actually had to ream these holes out to enlarge them. And to do that uh, time-consuming process, what I ended up doing was I went ahead and I uh, chucked this up in my cordless drill using the slowest speed possible. Um, I basically just on reverse that way the um, grain of the file didn't grab because if you did that it just rip it right out and ruined it. Um, so just turning in reverse against the grain um, I just basically reamed the hole out doing this. And so I made several of them already. I'm, I'm not going to show that process. It was just me spinning a file. Not, not a whole lot going on there. But the next step in the guy wire is to assemble them. Now, this one, uh, you've got a couple of options. These are brass, so you can solder to them. Or you could... Um, glue them in place. Now if I have the option to solder I'm going to. Metal to metal I solder. You know it's kinda of like welding. Why would you glue it together? You'd weld it together and soldering is kind of the miniature version of that. Um, I don't have a ton of brass um, wire uh, but what I do have a ton of is old networking cable which just happens to be solid copper wire which happens to also be the perfect diameter to fit through the tiny tiny holes in these guy wire supports so what I went ahead and did was stripped uh, some pieces of wire uh, got them as straight as I could and started soldering them now the thing that I found is that when you try and solder these small ones here 
the heat immediately transfers to the ring itself or the you know the support and melts the plastic <laughs> that doesn't really help you much so I learned the hard way I made this one first and these are glued in place as you can see and now I've got to try and come back and solder the copper wire to these which I know is going to melt um, I'm not going to show this because I have a feeling there's going to be some swearing and some disappointment what I decided to do was as an alternative is go ahead and solder these separately just make this structure and then you can easily insert your piping into it once you've got everything made as you can see it just fits right in there and then you have the option to glue this in place once this is complete which is what I'm gonna do and then I'll spray paint this whole thing a gray and then probably um, well, I'm gonna check but I, I think these will all be you know a metallic color as well so I'm gonna use this as one of the um, feeder hoses coming off of the main head house and into the uh, covered um, loading and unloading area that I just made so okay it's post Thanksgiving and unfortunately it's been a few days since I've actually been down here to shoot and I kinda forgot a little bit of where we were uh, so we might have made a huge jump because I did get some time to work but didn't have a lot of time to record so um, that being said I've got uh, I went ahead and I, I painted everything and you can see this is the um, the conveyor system that uh, that I made up and I haven't uh, applied any of the guardrails or there's handrails and then there's railing um, uh, a ladder that's supposed to go to the top of this I have to uh, still get that on here but uh, so I spray painted that or airbrushed that and then uh, I also airbrushed um, the uh, conveyor buildings across the top. I thought they turned out pretty well. And so the other thing I did work on is the the windows. And now the one thing that I did find is uh, with this being open in the back here, um, when this was up against the backdrop, light would shine in through and you could see through these windows, which isn't really what I wanted. So what I did is I just took a piece of black construction paper and I don't know how well it'll show up, but I just glued it in place in the back here and um, it's uh, it helps hide and darkens everything up. The other thing I wanted to point out though, um, in coloring these windows for use in here, um, I just ended up taking a sh just a standard sharpie and while these were still on the sprue and I can just demonstrate here because I've got a bunch of them left um, just took the sharpie and basically just ran it across the top like so and turned it like so and then after it dried on some of them I came back and, and did it again but you can see that it's uh, you get a little bit darker of an effect but um, it worked out pretty well I mean it gives it the the look of the mullion windows I think that's the right term um, without having to try and paint it on and so you could do this uh, if you got a silver sharpie I just happen to have a black one so I use the black one but I know that they make silver paint sharpies you could use that as well uh, and then what I did is uh, I took some of this weathered black uh, mix that I have and then a, um, a basic cosmetic sponge and uh, I, I rolled some on using my stir stick. I rolled some over the top of it to get a, a basic wash. Actually, I think this is the one that I used here. Uh, and then I kind of came by and I, uh, while, again, while they were still on the sprue, um, I just dabbed at the back of the window just a little bit, not a lot, and then with a cleaner one with a little bit of water on it, I just kind of came and removed some of it, and that gave it kind of, it's hard to tell on the video, um, but it gives it a kind of a dirty uh, industrial window effect. 
Um, now, of course, when I put the black background in here, you, you really can't tell. Uh, but on the main structure, they, they look a little bit, uh, there's no light showing through, so you can see that there's, um, that their windows are dirty. So, so that was my techniques for that. So now, uh, the other thing I did is uh, here's the completed um, uh, piping with the guy wires. Now, the one thing I will say that, that maybe some people will be a little disappointed with going with this technique, as you remember, I used copper wire for this, so my wire isn't perfectly straight. So you can see that there's some wobbles in here and, and things aren't exactly perfect. Um, However, uh, I, I'm, I'm okay with it. Uh, you know, I, I guess it would have been nice to, to have it perfectly straight. Um, we'll just say over the years it's, it's taken some, some abuse and, and isn't straight, perfectly straight anymore. Well, well, that'll be the story anyway. So uh, I got these painted and um, I'll show you the, uh, the completed structure here in a second. Okay. Um, so now I've got uh, everything I kind of need in place. Uh, there's some detail parts that I haven't finished, uh, but I figure I can start working on scenery to keep this project moving. Um, I will say this has been a really long project and I'm kind of eager to get onto uh, some new stuff, but don't want to skip ahead too much. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to mark, give a general idea of where the structure should go, um, just so I can get scenery basically in the area. This is also going to be important once I start placing these guys in here um, and where these will end up going. I'm beginning to find the only downside to this project is that I should have did the background structures first instead of doing the foreground structures and now having to try and model over the top of them. It wasn't the best uh, forward thinking there, but oh well. So over here in the corner, I've decided I'm going to just build a, a small hill, I think. Um, I'm just trying to decide how I want to do this. And uh, for those who haven't seen my other videos on scenery construction, I'm just working with uh, extruded pink styrofoam nothing special there. And um, I'm going to rough in the shape of the hill um, using this stuff, the styrofoam. And the great thing is it's just it breaks and cracks so easily. I definitely don't want it that close to the structure though. And the great thing is, is these scrap pieces can be used elsewhere. I'm gonna leave that like that actually. So we'll go like that. Like that. I'm gonna glue these pieces together, I think, and just get a little hillock in here or something like that. Alright, it doesn't look like much. Uh, at the moment, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and apply some um, um, liquid nails for projects, glue them all together, and then uh, because it's in the corner, I'm going to actually take them out and I'm going to shape them uh, off the layout. It, even with my long arms, um, it, it's quite the reach. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll shape them off the layout and then I'll glue them in place. And then ultimately what I'm going to come back and do is with some uh, plaster cloth, um, I'll shape the actual contours and get, uh, get the, the, the ultimate final form in uh, once that's done. So uh, I'm going to take those off the layout, glue them together, and start shaping them. All right, I've gone ahead and um, roughly shaped in the uh, styrofoam. And I did the same over in another area as well. And now uh, I've gone ahead and taken uh, some plaster cloth, and this is from Scenery Express, and this is just the plaster impregnated gauze, essentially. And um, as some comments on a previous video uh, made, you can easily just 
circumvent buying this and just use paper towel dipped in plaster, dipped in hydrocal. Uh, you could even go so far as to get your own gauze and use that and you'll, you'll essentially get this. All this is is just a dried plaster on the gauze itself. So all I have to do then, I've got this um, aluminum tray full of water. You dip it in very briefly, it gets wet. You apply it to the, um, you know, whatever surface that you are gonna be putting it over. And that's it. Um, usually I try for two layers, depending on how, um, how hard I want the shell. This creates a really good shell um, and two layers will create almost a cast like hardness like a, a cast for your arm or leg or something like that. So uh, you'll end up with a pretty hard shell. And then the other thing you can do is come over the top of this with Sculptamol to fill out any cracks and uh, crevices and stuff that, that this leaves behind. Well, after what seems like months, and I think it actually literally is months of work, I'm going to call this come scene good enough for now. It's not complete, but uh, it's kind of gotten long in the tooth, and I'm ready to move on to other projects. Now, there's some danger in doing that, right? Because if I do that, there's a good chance I'm not going to come back and finish this. However, I think that the scene is, is to a point where it it's now fully scenic and I've got some small things to finish up, um, some minor details on the roof uh, of the, the main head house, and you know, just some little things here and there. Um, one of the big things that I'm having trouble with, actually, is uh, getting the piping in to the to go from these structures here. Um, I really, I'm really not sure you, you can glue one in and uh, I've got to figure that out so you know I, I, I took all that time to make those I really want to get them in and utilize them uh, unfortunately they're giving me a little bit of a headache and I got to walk away from them they're frustrating me too much at the moment so I'll give you an overview of the the completed scene here so here it is it's gonna be hard to get everything in the in the shot here but um, this is the scene uh, I've got uh, just I put some like limestone gravel down underneath the grain dryers and that that's an area that I want to come back and put some grass and overgrowth in you know kind of kind of thing um, but I finished off the scenery in uh, in this area and it's still wet I, I actually just finished it and I've got a load of cars sitting in there just for for looks um, but I'm uh, pretty happy with how things turned out. Uh, and here's the, the corner that I showed the start of the scenery. Uh, put a lot of trees in here. And uh, just some riprap and gravel. And in the back there you can see there's a few rock molds that I put in on the hillside. Uh, and little things like that. And then I put some more of the limestone ballast in uh, next to the silos. Things like that. And then while I was doing all this, I finished off some of the scenery, like kind of in this area here, in between the tracks, stuff like that. So you can see from this side, this is the scene as it stands. All right, well, that's that's the uh, the grain elevator. Like I said, at least at, uh, to this point, um, there's going to be some stuff that I'm going to finish up, and I think I'll. When I do finish that stuff up, I'll come back and I'll just show you guys what I did to complete the scene. Um, I want to put, uh, like on the tracks themselves, you know, just uh, some piles of, of grain. I'll figure out how to simulate that. I've got some sand that might look like uh, grain. You know, just because you're loading and unloading, the stuff spills and, and all that kind of stuff. I need to add more uh, green, like overgrowth and areas. and and stuff like that. Uh, I've got some more trees that I want to fit in in the corner there and and then on, on that side uh, I gotta finish you know the scenery all the way um, and actually what will be really nice is shy of the the fascia on this part of the layout this whole section will actually be done which is kinda nice. Um, so uh, that's the elevator scene. I hope everyone enjoyed it. I, I know it got uh, quite long, a three-part series, and each of them was at least a half hour long. We'll, we'll see how long this one is once it's edited, but uh, I have a feeling that it's going to be um, another long one. Uh, I hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving for those in the U.S., for those uh, across the pond and elsewhere. 
Um, I hope you guys had uh, a great holiday coming up here with uh, Christmas coming up. With the holidays coming up, and, and you may have noticed that it took me quite a while from the last video to this one, and, and with the holidays arriving, we've got holiday parties and Thanksgiving, and you know, we had Thanksgiving, and now we'll have Christmas, and there's Christmas get togethers and all that kind of stuff. So, um, next few projects I might keep kind of small. I actually have a plan, I have a Genesis, um, the uh, FP45 or F45. Um, unit that I have is actually a Genesis engine with a Tsunami sound decoder in it and the uh, a thern uh, grain of rice or bulbs that burned out and I want to switch those over to LEDs however that um, decoder doesn't support LEDs because it only has 1.5 volts on the functions and that's not enough to drive the LEDs so uh, I was working with an engineer uh, electrical engineer that I happen to work with and he gave me an idea for a circuit that I can use uh, to drive those and use the functions to trigger um, the circuit so uh, it could be a fun project it could be a little bit of an electrical project some soldering and and a little bit above and beyond your standard decoder and hopefully helpful to anybody else who's had this problem um, and then I also have um, I've gone away from the idea of having a helix on the layout, but what I've decided to do is I'm in the process of redesigning what started as the 4 by 8 sheet part of my layout. Um, I don't like it. I, I do, um, but I, I think it, it lacks, you know, it, I don't know, I, I, I want to change it. And so I picked up some new videos over the last few weeks, and one of them showed Wisconsin Central Crossing, the Wisconsin River, and it has a three-span um, steel truss bridge. Um, and I thought, you know, I want to model that. And I don't know if I'm going to do three spans. I might scale it down to two spans, but um, I believe it's Central Valley. I've got to look that up. I, but I believe it's Central Valley makes a model of a single track um, steel truss bridge that could be perfect for it. So I'm in the process of designing uh, how I'm going to fit that in. And uh, I think this might be my first foray into cookie cutter techniques and using, um, you know, just putting in the, the actual roadbed and then uh, having, you know, scenery go below the trackage and then also adding water, which I know a while back someone commented that I have no water on my layout. So I thought, hey, you know, this would be the perfect opportunity to add water. Um, so we'll see. That's, that's uh, down the road. Um, I've got to actually tear up some parts of the layout, which, you know, is always, you've worked hard on that stuff and then to tear it up and, and start over, you, you got to kind of get yourself to that mode. But uh, I wanted to do some pay it forward. Unfortunately, I am strapped for time. I will follow up on the next video and do some pay it forwards. There's a lot of people um, on my last video that asked for plugs, and I promise I'll get to those. And I want to do that. I'm just I'm really trying to get this video done. Um, I want to get this project finished. So I will follow up with some pay it forward uh, YouTube plugs, and uh, we'll get to those next time. So that's the end of. Uh, the Grain Elevator series. Uh, for now, like I said, I'll follow up later with uh, hopefully just a final, hey, this is what it is, uh, ends up looking like. But uh, thanks again for sticking with me for all three parts. I hope you guys learned something. Hope you picked up a few tips along the way. And if nothing else, if it was just entertaining to watch. So uh, we'll see you next time.